Yesterday was the one year anniversary of the pandemic and there's been a lot of talk and, uh, about what the past year has been like. But one thing that I feel is being left out of the discussion just by background uh, my brother was uh, talking briefly with me and he was saying I don't know anyone who has who has died from this and I a uh, very few people who have actually become ill from this I think it's important to recognize there's a large swath of people in the United States and a special kind of people in the United States for whom the pandemic has had largely no effect other than adding a little spice to life. Um, in, in the state of Ohio, goodness, uh, it, the people who have died from COVID are are very largely, what is it, 73%? Uh, they're over 75 years old, okay? The, uh, half of the people who died in the state of Ohio are people who are uh, either over 80 or in long-term care or nursing home facilities. This is in Los Angeles County. The half of the COVID cases are people who are Hispanic. This, this sickness weights heavily on certain demographics. And looking at it from the opposite perspective, it, uh, it does not affect people such as myself. Okay. Um, uh, I'm a truck driver, as you can see and here that my job was not affected at all at all uh, I had the same hours had the same benefits had the same security uh, and had the same respect so my my position was not even was was never touched there is a large swath of white people for whom the pandemic really had very little effect. And you're talking, I'm talking about, a, I'm, at least for myself, I was wearing my mask when I was supposed to, um, got the vaccine as soon as I could. There are people that it affected a lot less than me. Uh, where, where I work, the the great majority of people would never wear a mask. It was a political item, and they would they wouldn't ever be seen dead uh, wearing a mask. That is, they yeah they 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 would never do that. Now, why is that important? It's important because we always need to remember that goodness. Well, well, over 85% of all the wealth in our country is either owned or controlled by white men. And, and if the people who control almost all the wealth and the power in the country Power and riches are the two main motivators uh, for, for people. Power and money. And if the person is young enough, sex. Uh, but once you reach a certain age, it really weights toward power and money. And that power and money in the United States is controlled by, uh, um, shoot, to a huge majority uh, by white men. That makes a big difference on what happens with a pandemic such as this 
or any awful circumstance, any awful circumstance will always affect disadvantaged communities more than it will affect the wealthy, more than it will affect me. Uh, and uh, that, I feel, is extremely important for getting a handle on what we experienced through this pandemic. And why, why it is that for a large portion of our country, it was easy to say, you know, let's, let's, let's ignore this because it was easy to ignore. Uh, you know, there was a time that my wife sent me to the store to get toilet paper and the, sh the, the uh, shelves looked pretty empty, but I was able to find it and, uh, and, and bring it home. Goodness, is that, is that the entire effect? No, the, the big one was having to, uh, having to quarantine for a week. I had sick pay for that week that I could take. Um, I, I know one person who died and uh, she was not a close friend. She was a neighbor, uh, a wonderful woman, but I did not know her well. My wife knew her much better. Here, here's, here's the point. If, if power and money are mostly controlled by one demographic, white men, and if a circumstance does not touch that demographic, and largely the pandemic did not touch, uh, it, it, what I'm saying, it is weighted away from that demographic, then less is going to be done unless people of goodwill step forward. Uh, there was one podcast, Serial, very well worth listening to, uh, about a, uh, a school that would had very poor ratings and very poor performance. And uh, then some white people came in and said, let's see if we can't turn this around. And money started flowing. And uh, uh, it, it's, it's well worth listening to what happened as a result of that. Basically, it became a two-tier school where, yeah, the money started flowing and the school became popular and the grades really increased and the quality of the school went sky high and it became a school that was in demand for a magnet school and in the end you had a two-tiered student body the black students who used to be there who were still receiving far less resources and the white students who had come because it was the school uh, that was popular and the place to go uh, who again just the same, that's where the resources were flowing. And it was a, uh, uh, and, and it took and it took a while to regain equilibrium. That is the problem for every issue with which we deal. And it was especially pronounced uh, with the pandemic. Uh, 